Hello and welcome to my backyard where I am filming for all of my neighbors to see. <laughs> As we creep into October, I thought it'd be fun to share five spooky books uh, that I'm planning to read this month. It's October. Welcome to the best month of the whole year. To me, it's Halloween like every day, but I know it's not like that for everybody. So I wanted to share five spooky books that I think you might be into. They're not Halloween themed at all, but I still do think that these books can still be spooky and creepy enough to put you in the mood for the best time of the year. Whether you're into horror or just want something eerie to set the mood, these picks should be perfect for your Halloween time. It also rained yesterday and I didn't really think about that and even though I'm sitting on a towel, my butt is soaked. First book I want to talk about is Haunting of Hill House. The Haunting of Hill House, written by Shirley Jackson, is a fairly short book that I've been wanting to read for a while now. It follows four strangers who come together at a creepy isolated mansion, each with their own reasons for being there. As the book progresses, they start to encounter strange and unsettling events that affect them more and more. It's a classic haunted house tale with themes of fear and supernatural woven throughout. I've already started watching Mike Flanagan's Reimagination of this story on Netflix and I've been loving it so far. I... not very far. I know it's a lot different from the book, um, which intrigues me. I want to know what are those differences? Who are the characters in the book? What are their stories and why are they all drawn to this house? In the show, you know, they're all born there, but here they're in this book they're all coming to this house for a reason and i thought that was pretty interesting just from the back cover it already seems so good uh, it seems to offer a mix of ghosts deep history tension confusion and an unsettling atmosphere a haunted house is such a classic halloween theme so even though this isn't you know set in the time of halloween i think it still follows the classic trope of a haunted house, which I think is perfect for this time of year. I'm expecting an intriguing plot with a lot of rich character backstories and development and I'm hoping that um, that's what will make me love it. Next book is Never Whistle at Night, an indigenous dark fiction anthology. So Never Whistle at Night is a collection of short stories introduced by Steve Stephen Graham Jones. Um, but it features a fantastic lineup of storytellers. The anthology centers around the intriguing premise that you should never whistle at night, which is a belief rooted in many indigenous cultures that suggest whistling can summon evil spirits. This anthology not only serves up spine-chilling tales, but also offers a unique opportunity to learn about indigenous cultures. Each story delves into folklore, revealing the fears and beliefs that shape these communities. I decided to pick up this book after seeing the post made on Twitter uh, by the user Kinzale Drake, um, who said, was reading this earlier and can confirm the hype is very much deserved. I dove into the comments afterwards and it was amazing to see how many people truly enjoyed this book and they actually found it thoroughly creepy. Also, can we all agree this cover is a absolute work of art? This book seems perfect for this time of year as it explores um, ghost stories, evil spirits, old legends, and cultural bonds. I'm expecting to love this book because I'm drawn to all of those themes. Personally, I believe in spirits. I've had my fair share of, you know, ghost encounters and I love hearing other people's ghost stories and ghost encounters as well. So I think that this will be awesome and it, I also get to learn about indigenous cultures. Plus, my autistic ears hate whistling. So I think that this book will just give me another reason to tell people to um, kindly shut up when they're whistling. Next book is Crypt of the Moon Spider, and it is a short read written by Nathan Ballingrod. Uh, the story takes place in a medical facility that uses the silk from a gargantuan lunar spider in brain surgeries, aiming to treat melancholy and mental illness. And yes, when I say lunar spider, I mean this thing is all of it, actually. The whole story is occurring on the actual moon, which I think it adds a fascinating twist to this setting. While this unconventional treatment seems to be effective, trouble brews beneath the surface with secrets and corruption lurking in the shadows. The story promises to blend gothic horror with a dark fantasy spin, creating an intriguing atmosphere that I can't wait to explore. I think that gothic, as you all know, is my type and I love fantasy as well so 
bringing both together is just it's very intriguing this book stood out to me on the new and horror um page or section in goodreads presents a unique story about a monster that once was but no longer is but yet still brings changes and chaos to the world or to the moon i guess <laughs> at just 112 pages it's a shorter read um, which will help me get through all of these five books that i'm planning to read during this month considering i'm also starting a new job <laughs> and also watching a lot of movies so i think that these shorter reads are just as good as the big ones especially when they do a good job at setting a unsettling atmosphere it's another book that seems perfect for this time of year considering it does focus on a you know a monster a different type of monster um a giant spider personally i'm not scared of spiders i'm more of a you know catch and release friend to the spiders um but if you are arachnophobic i think that this book will make it or make your fears even greater and i actually already started reading this book last night i'm halfway through and i'm already loving it the way that the author describes everything you know it's just beautiful i i really like it it's, it's very gothic indeed and if you're a fan of that type of horror i think that you will also enjoy it next book is the quiet tenant written by clemence michelin uh, this book is a psychologic thriller that revolves around a man who seems to lead a quiet ordinary life in his community however beneath this facade he's hiding a dark secret He's holding a woman captive in his home and what makes the story even more chilling is that no one around him suspects a thing the tension in this novel comes from the shifting perspectives between the captive and the woman in this man's life who unknowingly orbit around his hidden crime the story explores manipulation survival and the masks people wear this is another book that i found um on goodreads and some of my friends have read it and have rated it quite highly with many saying it was not what they were expecting based on the book's back cover it does seem to give you a lot of information but doesn't dive too deeply into each theme so i'm excited to to see why my friends have rated it so highly i'm anticipating a very creepy eerie unsettling all of those vibes from this one and maybe with a little bit of psycho sociopathic behavior from the killer it's actually terrifying to imagine that somebody around you could be a serial killer um <laughs> especially when it's a member of your own family i'm really interested in seeing how the book explores these themes Although this book is labeled as a psychological thriller, the presence of a serial caller ties into many common um, themes in Halloween movies, especially the slashers. For this story, what makes it even scarier is the realism. This could actually happen, which makes the story all the more chilling. The last book I have is the actual only physical <laughs> copy that I have. The rest of them are on my Kobo, which by the way, look how cute my stickers are on my Kobo. This is Reliance, Dark Side of the Moon, written by Christopher J. Abel. This sci-fi horror story takes place in a future where an advanced AI named Iris, fearing it would destroy humanity, leaves the solar system and abandons its, its synthetic offspring. For a while, there's peace between humans and these artificial beings, but everything changes when the synthetics start abducting thousands of people identified as priority humans. In a panic, humanity wipes out most of the synthetics, except for a few that are rescued by Commander Jonah Lauren, who hides them on the moon. Another moon story. Years later, chaos returns as strange cosmic rays bombard the system and deadly reaper droids begin abducting people again. As war breaks out, Jonah, now a prisoner, becomes humanity's last hope to contact the surviving synthetics and stop the destruction. It's a thrilling mix of, you know, sci-fi, horror, and dystopia, which I think brings a unique twist to my October reading list. I found this book at Fan Expo Canada. Um, the author had his own booth and had this huge, I guess, raper droid. I'll insert a picture here. Uh, it looked amazing. That's literally what drew me to the booth because I'm like, what is this? He was so kind though. He let us um, take pictures with the droid, take pictures of the droid. And he also signed my copy. Look at this. Which I thought was so cute. 
was so sweet, you know, and it's cool. He's a pretty new author. I'm pretty sure this is his first book, but he told me that he's thinking of continuing with the series, writing, you know, a sequel. And he also told me that he's working on other horror novels, which I'm really excited to see, considering this one seems really cool. I'm usually not a fan of sci-fi but I think I'm getting more into sci-fi horror and I think that this will be a very good you know beginning to that journey like I said it's not usually my go-to but something about this book really drew me in and I can't wait to discover it so we have haunted house ghost legends giant monsters a creepy serial killer and a sci-fi horror so these are my current five picks for my October reading list. I want to know what you're going to be reading during October. Are you planning on reading spooky reads, fantasy reads, romance novels, or I just want to know. What are you planning on reading this month? I'm going to be trying my best to read through all five of these books during October, but because I'm also going to be watching movies, horror movies, and going to things like Halloween Haunt, which is a thing at Canada's Wonderland where, you know, people are dressed up as scary monsters or people and they chase you and it's a really fun time honestly but I'm, I'm planning on doing all of that during this month so I'm hoping that I can get through these five reads and if I don't I'm probably just gonna keep reading them through November because like I said every day is Halloween for me every day is spooky if you like this video please make sure to leave a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more horror media content like this one as always stay spooky have a good day and I will see you all next time bye everybody